hi everybody welcome back to my channel my name is Cameron and today after a long time we're back and we're gonna be doing our March wrap up but hello you guys good morning good afternoon wherever you are I'm so happy you clicked on this video so it's been a minute but that's fine we're sitting on the floor today because my anxiety is just it's through the roof right now and I need to sit on something like the floor to keep me leveled and sane so I can film this video because I promise y'all I would do it and we're not gonna let our anxiety get the best of us today say with me our anxiety does not define us it does not control our day sometimes it does but that's okay we just reel it on back and then we ground ourselves and we keep it pushing so that's what we're doing today so for the month of March, it was middle grade March. So for the most part, that is what I read. I have read 13 books in the month of March. And I'm super excited because honestly, I didn't think I was going to make it past five. The way my anxiety and the way my life's been happening, I just didn't know if I can make it past five books. So the fact that I hate it to 13, that's, that's a proud moment. And we're going to take it and we're going to run with it. So the first book that I read for the month of March, it is Finley Donovan, Knox Some Dead, which is number two in the Finley Donovan series. There are three books in this series. And if you don't know anything about these books, please read them. They're absolutely freaking hilarious. I gave this one, I think a 4.5 out of five. So basically this book, it is about Finley Donovan. She is a writer. She is also a divorcee. And she's really just trying to make it work out there as an author. She's trying to get published. And in the first book, she is meeting with her publisher and she's pitching to her publisher the story and another woman is listening and basically the way Finley is describing it is she sounds like a hit woman and so the woman like slips Finley this note and is like hey I need you to like kill my husband and Finley's like what what are you talking about no we're not doing that and the lady's like yeah like I heard you talking in Panera and you're a hit woman and she's just like I'm not a hit woman but Finley Donovan I don't know why she does but I'm glad she did but she decides to call this lady and when she calls her it just takes her and her family on this wild ride of adventures and absolutely hilarious events. So basically every daydream you've ever had of something just random happening to you it's in this book. So Finley Donovan knocks him dead. It is just a continuation of the first series and there is a third book that comes out and I think it's Finley Donovan jumps the gun. So I do have an arc for that book and I need to read it and I need to review it because I am just like I'm itching for it. I need more Finley Donovan. So Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead is the first book that I read for the month of March. So the next book that I read it is a middle grade book called What Stays Buried and this book it is about a girl named Callista Wynn and she's 12 years old and Callista Wynn when she turns 13 she will lose the ability to speak to ghosts. It is a family curse that has been going on for ages and for her 13th birthday Callista wants to break the curse because she wants to keep talking to to the dead and she just wants to keep her gifts but there is a curse that involves her family and things start getting at stake because children are going missing in Callista's town and she is the only one that can see these missing children and help the town find where their kids went so this book oh my gosh I bawled I bald mind you I'm in the middle of work okay I'm reading I'm at work I'm reading this book I'm at my desk and I read the end of the book tears just tears falling so I'm in the corner with eye drops trying to like make sure <laughs> make it look like I'm not crying before I forget this book is by Suzanne Young and if you guys remember I put this book in my um, most anticipated books post on Instagram and she saw it and I was granted an arc, so I was super excited. I was super excited about that. And I read it within like two days. It was done, I ate it up, I absolutely loved it. And it's just, it's one of those really cute heartwarming stories because Callista has this younger sister and she's just so cute and oh she's adorable and I'm just like can I adopt her she's not even real but can I adopt her she's adorable that's just basically how attached to those characters I got because like just picturing how cute these kids are I'm like I want one not really but <laughs> not right now but I enjoyed this book I gave this book a four out of five stars on Goodreads so if you want to read my full review on that you can check it out there but What Stays Buried by Suzanne Young is one of the books that I read for the month of March 
So the next book that I read, it is The House of Lost Horizons by Chris Robertson. Now this is a graphic novel. It's kind of like an Agatha Christie, kind of reminds me of Agatha Christie's book, and then there were none. So basically that's kind of the theme of this book and that's basically what's happening. So we have our main character, Sarah Jewell. She's visiting a family friend on this island and big storm hits, lights go out, boom somebody dies and Sarah Jewel's on the mystery. She's on the hunt to find the killer. Now, it does seem cliche when I say it out loud, but when you read the book, it's actually got a lot of like different little things here and there that each character has something different going on as to why they're there on the island. And the reveal for this, I was just like, it was, it was, it was, it was not what I expected, but in a good way because it all, and it also made me mad too because it's just like, of course, this is what happened. You, like Once you read it, you understand why I'm saying like, oh, of course, that's what happened. And of course, that's who he used to get what he wanted kind of thing. So when you read this graphic novel, you're going to understand what I'm saying. But if you want like a really quick, just a, a good 1920s whodunit mystery thriller with a little bit of culture in it that one did have a lot of culture in it i will say and i was very impressed i think that one would be a nice cool read just to help get you through the month and just to knock out some things when it comes to your tbr list so the next book that i read it is oh caledonia by elsif barker so i didn't not like the book my mistake was going into this book thinking that it was going to be a mystery thriller like a whodunit and it wasn't about that at all and I think that's why I confused myself. So what I did was I went back, reread it and then read the first part of the book like the prologue and then it made sense to me. So that's kind of how I think you should read it. So basically don't read the prologue first just read the just read the story and then go back and read the prologue and then that is what's going to connect the story. Did I like this book? Yes I gave it a four out of five. It really reminded me of Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar which I really did like that book and you know Janet it's it's funny. It's kind of just like Janet is just like this kid who is quirky. She's got a little bit of an attitude and you know it just reminds all of us of of ourselves we got a little attitude we got a little we got a little snip snippy and her just sense of humor with her really eccentric family it, it's funny and you can tell why she's the black sheep of the family because her humor and compared to what her family does it just doesn't mesh it's just a really sad story about a girl who just wanted to be left alone to live her life and her family just wouldn't let her do it so i think it's a really good coming of age story with the ending that you know is a little bit that's not what we want but it's still a great read and I highly recommend that book. So Elsa Barker's O Caledonia is one of the books that I read for March. The next book that I read it is The Agathas by Kathleen Glasgow and then Liz Lawson. I almost said Larson don't ask me why. I'm pretty sure some of you guys know about the Agathas like it's been out for a while but please go read the synopsis on it I I can't describe it without ruining it <laughs> like that's just I just I can't I can't do it and it's not because the description can't but it's because I love this book so much where I'm just gonna F it up and I'm just gonna say what happened so basically two friend two girls from two different worlds come together to solve one of their friends murder and a lot of things start unraveling in this school that they're going to and they're starting to get in a little bit of danger because there's people in town where they're kind of just not liking how much details they're finding how many people they're talking to and the places that they're going so it's a good old whodunit with a good old stay out of my way or you won't get hurt kind of messages on the wall I'm here for it. I love a good mystery like that. Set right all over my walls. Tell me to mind my business. Just give me a good story. <laughs> so I'm actually on the second book right now. I was very kindly, kindly sent an arc for this book and I think I'm 20% finished and it's getting good. It's getting good. Stuff's already happened and we're already on the hunt. So it's a rodeo and I'm here for it. So The Agathas by Liz Lawson and Kathleen Glasgow is one of the books that I read for March. So the next book that I read, it is another middle grade, The Vanishing of Aveline Jones by Phil Hicks. 
So if you guys know or remember, I have read the Aveline Jones series. I absolutely love Aveline Jones because it reminds me of Coraline Jones, but in London and with a little bit more mystery and a lot more paranormal happening. So I'm gonna read the synopsis for this one because I just, I loved the synopsis and I wanna read it to you. Aveline Jones is determined to discover the truth behind her uncle's mysterious disappearance as she travels to his home with her mom and Aunt Lillian. After years of hoping Aveline's uncle would return, they have finally decided to sell his house. But Aveline and Harold have other plans. Sneaking into her uncle's study, Aveline discovers that he has been researching possible supernatural activity around an ancient burial mound. Dark, magical forces are at work and they'll do anything to remain hidden as Aveline and Harold will soon learn. So that's basically what the book about. Every book has a different theme. So this one, Aveline's finding her uncle. The second book, it was um, Aveline was having to do with like a witch. And the first one, Aveline was solving the mystery of some missing children in her town. Or it was her aunt's town. Yes. I am obsessed with these books. I really hope he continues to write these books. They're really great middle grade stories and they're short enough to where you're not going to get all kerbobbled and just get a rut from just reading so much. I think each book is like 180 pages or so so it's perfect for if you are in a reading slump and you're trying to get out of it and you just like I said you just don't want to overload your mind. So Aveline Jones by Phil Hicks is one of the books that I read for the month of March. So the next books that I read it is a part of a series of three books by Ellen O and it is called Spirit Hunters. So I'm going to read you guys the synopsis about what the entire series is not really about but the premise of the story. Harper Rain, the new seventh grader in town who must face down the dangerous ghost haunting her younger brother. A riveting ghost story and captivating adventure, this tale will have you guessing at every turn. Harper doesn't trust her new home from the moment she steps inside, and the rumors are that the Rain's new family house is haunted. Harper isn't sure she believes those rumors until her younger brother Michael starts acting strangely. The whole atmosphere gives Harper a sense of deja vu, but she can't remember why. She knows that the memory she's blocking will help make sense of her brother's behavior and the strange and threatening sensation she feels in this house, but will she be able to pull the pieces together in time? I really did like this book. It was a spooky story. It had really good twists and turns. And when you start getting into the haunting of her brother, even I got goosebumps. And usually it's rare if I get goosebumps with books. I don't know. I just, I don't get the heebie-jeebies from books a lot. But this one did, especially when it came to the haunting of her brother, because it was like, oh, it was weird. It made me look at kids like, are you haunted? Like, do you have a ghost in you? I don't know. It was the super, super fun adventure filled book and I highly recommend it. So the Spirit Hunter series by Ellen O is one of the books that I read for the month of March. So the next book that I read, it is The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Now I gave this book a five out of five because it was creepy. So in this book, it is about a woman in the 1900s with her husband. She's happily married. She has a child, but she's having some issues and it is described by her husband as hysteria. So if we remember hysteria in the 1800s, 1900s with women was she was on her cycle. She was having postpartum or something serious of the, along those lines. And they just call it hysteria, AKA you're just crazy. And we basically follow this woman on her journey of the yellow wallpaper and she's just there's a mystery going on with the wallpaper she knows it and we go along with her in discovering the madness and the mystery behind the yellow wallpaper so i really liked that the author took a different turn and made it kind of just like no i'm not crazy you're crazy and we all gonna do something about it so I was here for it. The Yellow Wallpaper, I gave it a 5 out of 5. And I, I don't know how I found this book. I was just randomly scrolling on Goodreads. I read that it was a gothic horror thriller. Yeah, I think that's what it was described as. And I was like, sold. Let's do it. Read it, loved it, and I think you should read it too. So The Yellow Wallpaper is one of the books that I read for the month of March. So the next book that I read, it is yet another middle grade and it is one, two, three, four, I Declare Thumb War and it is by Lizzie Harrison and Daniel Krauss. So I think I want to read the synopsis again just so you guys can get the full effect of what this book is about without me butchering it. So this book, it is the first book 
in the Graveyard Girl series, so I'm super excited about that. So it says, meet Whisper, Franny, Sophie, Gemma, and Zuzu, five friends who tell eerie tales by night and navigate middle school drama by day. In Misery Falls, Oregon, it's the 100th anniversary of the electrocution of the town's most infamous serial killer, Silas Hoke. And the town is abuzz when a mysterious text message leads the girls to the cemetery where Silas Hoke is buried. Life can't get any creepier, except, yes it can. Thanks to the surprise storyteller who meets them at the cemetery, it inspires the first ever meeting of the Graveyard Girls and sets the stage for a terrifying tale from Whisper that they'll never forget. So I loved this book. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 just because there was a lot of stuff in here to where I was kind of just like, this is like not kid? It's not for kids? I don't know why it's in here, but... <laughs> But like whatever but it is the first book out of the series and the second book it is called graveyard girls scream for the camera so that one comes out in october super excited about it because i just i love series give me more middle grade series in general where it's like spooky girls spooky teen spooky school kind of thing I'm here for it. I love it and I think you will too. So The Graveyard Girls is one of the books that I read for the month of March and I think you should read it too. So the next book that I read it is The Second Best Hotel on Mercer Street and I had to read it because it was a very long title and I'm not going to remember all that. But it is by Jane Pika and Corey Poopman Oaks. So synopsis read again. Here we go. A family-run haunted hotel's livelihood is threatened when a bigger haunted hotel opens up nearby in this hilarious spooky story. 12-year-old Willow Ivan's family has run the Hotel Ivan for 400 years. Through thick and thin, they've held on tight to their title as the best haunted hotel on Mercer Street. That is, until the Hauntry, a corporate chain of haunted hotels, moves down the street. As the Ivan's business fade, so do their ghostly staff. And Willow begins to worry that the Ivan's days are numbered. Then Willow meets Evie, a hauntery ghost who's forced to play the part of a spooky little girl even though she longs to be a terrifying phantasm. So when Willow offers her a job at the Ivan, Evie accepts, but she doesn't tell Willow that she's still working at the Ivan's the competition. For fear of losing her new job and friend, together the girls come up with a plan to save the Ivan. But with the Ivan ghosts already fading and Evie's secret threatening to come out, will it be too late? So I'm not gonna lie, it took me a year and a half to read this book. Why? I have no idea, but it was a little bit of a chunker for, I think, like, I just, I was just picking up different books. I don't even have an excuse for you. But I finished it, and I liked it. I gave it a four out of five. So this book, another book, had me bawling, crying, because it has to deal with the loss of a parent, and it's just, it's hard. I guess trigger warning for that, loss of parents, um, and it does talk about the events of how that happened. So that hit hard and it was a little difficult to push through, but we pushed through it and I really did love it in the end. It's super, super cute. And like, I love the idea of like the haunted hotel, like the corporate chain haunted hotel where ghosts and humans, well, like ghosts are humans, but like ghosts and the living cohabitate with each other. It's a really interesting concept and I always really like that. I'm sorry that it took me a long time to read this book, but it was great and I do regret not finishing it sooner, but I'm happy that I finished it overall. <laughs> so last but not least, we have The Shadow School Archimancy by J.A. White. So I've actually heard that people like when I read the synopsis. I don't know why, but I'm just gonna read this one too. So it says Cordelia Liu knew Shadow School was going to be different. Black gates and ivy walls, Long hallways lined with old paintings and a tower with a window that looks like an eye. Different she expected, different she could handle. Still, Cordelia can't shake the feeling that something's not right and she's being carefully watched. The answer isn't just in front of her eyes. It's in the gym next to the bulletin board, even in the cafeteria. The school grounds are filled with ghosts. Cordelia soon realizes that she's not the only one who can see them. Her new friend Benji can too. Together with the super smart Agnes, the trio are determined to find out why the ghosts are there and whether there's a way to set them free. But the school was created with more sinister intentions and someone is willing to go to extreme lengths to ensure the ghosts remain trapped forever. So I really loved this book. If you guys remember, I started reading it during a reading sprint and I finished it by the end. That's how much I love this book. So between alternating um, the audiobook, oh, <laughs> 
You guys see the tail? That's my dog. Well, between alternating of reading the book and listening to the audiobook, it only took me a couple hours to finish but this book had a lot of good mysteries and there was times where I'm just like if I was this kid in this book I would so punch one of these adults in the face like there's times where I'm thinking about this book I'm reading it and I'm just like if I was one of these kids in this book I would go to jail because let a teacher hold me hostage in a room somebody's getting punched in the jugular okay someone's getting clear throat punched in the neck and we're gonna have a problem but you know, it's it's fiction, it's fine. But yeah, let me find out my kid is being locked into a room and interrogated by a teacher. It's wild. This book was wild. I really did like it and I'm not exaggerating. I'm not kissing butt or anything like that. But this book, it was crazy. And I did and I like crazy, clearly. But I did love the character development and just the friendship between them. And like Agnes, Agnes is my girl. She would be my child. I would adopt her in a minute. She's one of those people where even though she can't see the goats, she still helps them out because she's just like, you're my friend. And if you're telling me this is what you see, then I'm going to believe you. There's some people where they're like, no, you're crazy. I don't believe you. And Agnes is a science person. So what I did like is that even though she was the science person, person, wow. So even though she was the science person, she still had respect for her friends and what they told her, even though she didn't believe in it. She's just like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but yeah, let's go. She's a ride or die. Agnes is a ride or die. And she was my favorite character in this book. Like, that's me. I'm just like, what? You want to go? Do you want to go to space? All right, cool. Let's go. When are we going? <laughs> Agnes just reminded me of me. And the book is hilarious. It had great themes. And the end I cried see this is the third book where I cried in the end because it has to deal with loss of a child it hits hard but it does and it's just right there smack dab in the heart so Archimancy by J.A. White it is a series and I'm on the second book I'm excited I haven't started it yet but we're going to be starting it today because uh it is April 7th and we got to get going on these reading we got to get going on my TBR so J.A. White's Dark and Mancy Shadow School is the last book that I read for the month of March. <sighs> we are done. That was all of the books that I read for the month of March. I'm so excited that you guys get to see this video today. <laughs> and I'm so excited to see what you guys think about this video. So give it a like, give it a thumbs up, save it, share it with anybody that you think might be interested in my channel. I do appreciate it. My back hurts. Ugh. I had a doctor's appointment today for physical therapy and I rescheduled it so I can film. So like this is love. I love you guys so much. No, I really do. I really do love you guys. You have no idea. I love you guys so much. Thank you all for watching. I will be back very soon and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!